Music Business Radio, brought to you by Country Radio Broadcasters. Visit crb.org for more information. From Music City, USA, it's David Hooper and Music Business Radio. Welcome to a special internet-exclusive episode of Music Business Radio. This episode features best-selling author, entrepreneur, and thought leader, Seth Godin. It was taped live backstage at the 40th Annual Country Radio Summit in Nashville, Tennessee. Now here's your host, David Hooper, with Seth Godin. David Hooper here, Music Business Radio. I'm backstage in the Green Room Country Radio Seminar. And with me is Seth Godin. He's a best-selling author, entrepreneur, and agent of change. I'm really excited that you came to Nashville because you're here at Country Radio Seminar. And, uh, you know, some, some of the music industry isn't really, uh, they're, they're kind of scared of change. So it was pretty gutsy for them to bring you in. I would say every industry is scared of change. <laughs> you know, what happens is you're successful doing one thing. And then another thing comes along. It's very tempting to say, well, I like doing this thing I'm successful at. Why should I give up being successful to try something where I probably won't be? Right. And it's human nature to right. want to not change. It's human nature to rebuild your house in New Orleans instead of moving someplace where there isn't going to be another hurricane. Right. And uh, my job is to provoke and tantalize and argue a little bit so that people can change when it's easy as opposed to when it's too late. Right. Absolutely. Well, there, there, there's, there's a saying that says, um, if you want to keep getting what you've been getting, keep doing what you've been doing. You've heard that, right? I have, but in this case, it doesn't work. Well, ex- right, because everything around you is changing. That's right. You can keep doing what you're doing in the music business, but you're not going to keep getting what you were getting anymore. It's over. The music industry is focused on the industry part, not so much on the music part. That was a quote from you. Yeah. I- explain. Well, I think that it is without argument that there is more music being listened to by more people more often today than any time in the history of mankind. That if your goal is to have music, you should be delighted. The industry people are upset because they liked radio the way it was, and they don't understand that the internet is the biggest radio station of all time, and the same motivation that made you want to get your song on the radio ought to make you want to get your song on the internet. The thing that is changing is that once your song's on the internet— I don't need to buy a digital copy. I already have one. So that means that what you do as someone in the industry is figure out ways that you can connect your artists with their tribe, your artists with their listeners, ways that you can sell souvenirs, live events, signed things, interactions, custom things. Those are things people in the tribe are willing to pay handsomely for. There's not no business. It's just a different business. Well, I, I want to talk about tribes because I, I love the book Tribes, and, and let's get into that. But real quick, um, something that Nashville is affected by with that is the songwriters. Songwriters are not making money off of live events, T-shirts, and, and that kind of thing. Do you have any advice for songwriters, and how can songwriters cope with all the change that's going on in the industry now? Well, cope is a scary word because you don't want to spend the rest of your life coping, right? But Poets don't hire me to give speeches at their conventions because poets don't have conventions. (laughs) There isn't a shortage of poetry, though. There's just no business for poets. Right. And unfortunately, in a world where the consumer sees the tribal leader as the performer, not the songwriter, the business of songwriting is going to change. And it's not necessarily going to get better, certainly not in the short run, because All the contracts, all the systems, everything that has been put in place over the last 100 years has been built around, the mechanical license has been built around someone paying when a physical item changed hands or when something got played on a BMI or ASCAP kind of place. Right. Well, when it's played on the internet for free, there's no money changing hands, and so it's really hard to get a commission on that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying we don't need songs. We do need songs. I'm just saying that society may have decided they're not going to pay for them the way they used to. And it may be that that thing you're good at has to be your avocation, not the thing to pay your mortgage. And it's not my fault, and I'm sorry it is that way, but maybe embracing that reality and realizing that that's a good reason to have your own tribe, that's a good reason to get in front of the microphone, that's a good reason to have a different kind of day job maybe, is better than just cursing the fact that the world changed under you. Well, sometimes like we're in a, what they would call like an economic slump right now, and I think it's also a great time for innovation like when something is not maybe perfect, like radio or the economy, I mean, people start to get innovative and get really, really smart. It might be a good, good yeah, time I think for it's, these it's, guys. It's, it's easy to say that just about every single major brand, just about every single major innovation from General Electric to Henry Ford to Google started 
when everyone else was despaired. It started when everyone else gave up and said, I better just go get a job at cooking hamburgers at the Nashville Zoo. That that is the moment when there's least competition, when the dip is the smallest, when the opportunity to push through is the biggest. So if you have the wherewithal and the resources to put your ideas out there, this is what you've been waiting for. Not three years ago when everyone was busy spending money as fast as they could. But here, right now, this is the moment. Well, it knocks out all the competition, doesn't it? That's right. Only the strong survive. There you go. Darwinism at its finest. Talk about tribes. Uh, You've got a book called Tribes. And and explain explain the concept for everybody. Well, we've had tribes for 75,000 years. A tribe is a group of people who align for self-interest because they like the connection to protect themselves from saber-toothed tigers, whatever. If you were in a tribe, you were more likely to survive because a loner can be easily picked off. So for a long time, we've had a work tribe, the people you work with, a spiritual tribe for Sundays or whatever, and the community tribe. But what the internet has done, what the music industry has done, what culture has done is let us have lots and lots of other tribes. So there's the tribe of people who into reggae, and there's the tribe of people who are Republicans who want to change this but don't want to change that. And there's the tribe of people who like certain kinds of food and certain kinds of restaurants. Every one of those tribes needs a leader. They need someone to connect them to each other. They need someone to create a mission, to create a movement. They need someone to move the ball forward. And some of those tribes have leaders, right? Barack Obama is the leader of his tribe. But then there are plenty of tribes that are still searching for a leader. And so if we look at someone like Indigo Girls, Indigo Girls showed up at a time when there was a group of women who were looking for someone to lead them, to connect them, to create a concert where they could meet each other. And they did it. And that group was there before Indigo Girls got there. But they stepped up and led them. And as a result, they've had an entire career based on leading that tribe. They don't need to sell a record to everybody in the whole world. They just need to interact with that group. And so music, more than almost any other business that I can think of, is tribal. And the mistake the music industry makes is they don't say, how am I going to find the Bob Marley tribe and take care of them and connect them, or the Grateful Dead tribe? They say, how am I going to get everyone in the world to listen to this song? Right. Well, it's, it's, uh, I guess what you call push marketing. That's right. Ma- mass media, let's blare it out for I everybody. I call it spam, right? <laughs> let's, right? Let's spam the world. Right. And it used to work really well. For we had so many advertising messages. So many days. advertising messages and so many choices. So in the old days... Casey Kasem had an enormous amount of power because there was only a few radio stations. And if you were in the top 40, everyone heard you. And if you were number 42, sorry. But now there's not 82 radio stations in New York City. There's 82 million radio stations. Right. Well, because of the Internet, because of mobile phones. Exactly. So I don't have to listen. And in fact, haven't listened to the top 40 in five years because I don't have to. And so you can't spam your way into my attention anymore because you're invisible. Well, and plus, I guess just from a creative side, so many more people are making music now. It's easier than ever to put out a CD. You don't even have to put out a CD. You can just record it and release it digitally. That's right. So not only is it cheaper, it's faster, and there's no barrier. That 